Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Reading for Vocabulary. I'm your host, Brian Stewart. We're going over cycles still. We're still talking about cycles. As you remember, cycles are things that don't really start anywhere or finish anywhere. They just kind of go and they repeat again and again. But what we're talking about in lesson 14 is what a farmer knows, and we're focusing on smart farming methods. So farmers think about cycles when they work. They have to know about cycles in order to grow the correct food for us. Of course, we need to eat and farmers uh, need to grow the food uh, that we get at the supermarket, right? So what do farmers know about cycles? How do they use their knowledge to help them in their jobs? That's what we'll read about in this lesson. But again, before we read before we do the reading section, we need to go over a vocabulary, a vocabulary list to make sure we understand the reading section well. Let's go. So the first one, number one, and of course we can see a farmer here with some of his products, right? Now, when we talk about the farmer's products, we say the crop that is gathered at the end of a season. The crop, crop of course means the type of food that the farmer is growing. When they gather at the end of a season, we call it the harvest, right? So this is a noun, and we say that it is all of the food that the farmer grows at the end of the season. Now we can talk about the harvest for one farmer, but usually we talk about the harvest and we mean all farmers for a region or a nation. So if we say the harvest was very good this year, we're usually talking about all farmers in our region. The harvest was very good this year, so there's a lot of food in the supermarkets, maybe prices are low. But of course we could also talk about individual. One individual farmer has a bad harvest and another farmer has a good harvest. So bad harvest, good harvest. It's the amount of food that they collect uh, at the end of the growing season. Okay, next one. Number two, to put seeds in a field to grow. Well, what do farmers do? They put the seeds into the ground in the field to grow. They don't do it by hand uh, so much these days. They usually use machines, but what do they call that? They call it to sow, to sow. And uh, it's interesting. Uh, there's a, an expression, I think it comes from the Bible, uh, you reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. Reap means to harvest, to gather. At the end, you get it. But think about it. Whatever you put in the ground, that's what you're going to get. But not just planting uh, seeds in the ground. If you lie, you're going to get a lot of problems. So if you sow problems, if you lie, if you do bad actions, what will you get from those? You'll get bad results. You reap what you sow. But if you do good actions and you tell the truth and you're good to your friends, then you will get a lot of appreciation and good things back from your friends. So that's a good expression to remember and it uses the word sow. Uh, it comes from to put fields, to put seeds in the field to grow, but also in our life we're also sowing our life, right? We're, our actions are sowing uh, the results that we'll get later on. So you reap what you sow. Sow is an irregular verb. We say sow, sowed, sown. Sowed, sowed, sow, sowed, sown. So we don't normally use this word in our everyday speech because we're not farmers, but sometimes we see expressions that do use this word. Okay, next one. To reach full growth. To reach full growth is to mature. And we need, of course, when we're talking about plants and crops like corn, tomatoes, apples, pears, we don't pick these things when they're young, when they're not mature. We have to wait till they are fully grown. Then we pick them and eat them. If you pick the tomato before it's mature, it's too small and it's green and oh, it tastes horrible, right? But if you wait till it's mature and then you eat it, then it tastes good and it's larger. Okay. 
A plant grown by farmers. So any plant grown by farmers, we already use this word in the first in explaining the first word. It's crop. So any plant grown by farmers is a crop. Usually, crops are things we eat. For example, potatoes, tomatoes,、um, uh, celery looks like、uh, they have here, squash.、Um, those are crops. But it's not just food. Because sometimes farmers will grow things that we don't eat, but that are used in other、uh, for other purposes. Okay,、uh, for example, like barley that's used to make、uh, beer. Right. Well, some people will make food from barley too, but farmers don't just grow food; they grow many different types of plants that are not just used for fruit, food. But any plant that is grown by farmers, is, we call it a crop. Okay, next one. A substance that keeps living beings healthy, and on a lot of things we can see、uh, the different listing. It's a list of what nutrients, right? And we have this word here, nutrition facts. They're very similar. Nutrition has to do with the、uh, things that we have to eat every day to keep us healthy, and those individual things are nutrients. You should choose foods. That have good nutrients and a lot of nutrients in them. Usually, junk food like hamburgers and French fries don't have a lot of nutrients. Right? Healthy food has many nutrients. These are substances that keep us healthy. Next one: to prepare the land for growing crops. Farming is hard work. Right? Uh, this, especially using this in a garden, in somebody's garden, you have to. What do you have to do to the soil? You have to cultivate. You have to prepare the land for growing crops. Now, on a big farm, they have big machines that will uh, uh, turn up the land. They will cultivate the field, and then it's ready so that they can put the seeds down. They can sow the land then. But this is what we call cultivate. Cultivate isn't just for farming. We can also use it for other ideas. For example, when you study, you are cultivating your mind. You're preparing your mind for later on in life, right? When you study different subjects, so you can cultivate your mind. Parents can cultivate their children. It just means that you're preparing them for something else. When you cultivate the land for growing crops, you are cultivating. Okay, next one. Good for growing, having plenty of nutrients. So if the land is good for growing, you can grow a lot of good、uh, crops there. And the land has a lot of nutrients in the soil. We say that the land is fertile, fertile. And if the land is not fertile, we say it's infertile. In means not. So if you think of the desert, can you grow plants in the desert? No, you can't because the desert is infertile. There's not enough nutrients in the soil, and of course, there's not enough water. <laughs> okay, but if you see good, rich earth and you pick it up and it's black, all right, it's very dark brown or black earth. That's fertile soil. It's good. It has a lot of nutrients in it. It's good for growing crops. It's fertile. Okay, next one. Eight to use again, and of course we know this symbol here. We see this in many places these days. But of course, this is what you should do with your garbage. If you're finished with a plastic bottle, what should you do? You should use it again. You should recycle. Re means again, right? And cycle, we know that word, right? It goes in a cycle. So we recycle. We use it again and again. And this is what we should do with our garbage, right? Plastic here, paper here, metal here, other garbage in another place. Recycle your garbage. Then we can use it again. Number nine, and animal waste. Animal waste. We think about animal waste. In a previous lesson, we talked about this, right? About training your dog. Remember, you may remember. What do pets do? Dogs go poo and pee. Poo and pee. Of course,、uh, poo is ugh, them say them say nah, right? Dung, right? Okay, and p of course is the water.、Uh, this is animal waste. Now it's interesting because farmers use animal waste. They use it to feed plants. Did you know that, right? If your dog goes poo poo next to a tree, 
that's good for the tree because the tree uses that as the, there are nutrients in the poo poo. Of course, it's very disgusting. We shouldn't, you know, you know, don't touch it, don't get near it. But sh plants like it, right? Because that's their food. Okay, so animal waste, and remember, we are animals too, so it can be human waste, not just your dog. Uh, animal waste that is used to feed plants, we have a special word for it. We don't call it poo or pee or dung, we call it manure, manure. And it's usually like cow manure or horse manure. It could be other types of animals, but usually it's cow manure because farmers have cows, a lot of cows, and what are they doing? They're pooing a lot, so they use that uh, for manure. And in fact, that's an industry. Some companies make manure. That's their job. They take the animal waste and they make it into manure that looks like this, and they sell it to farmers. And so they transfer it. And so that's an industry. That's a company, right? It's a very interesting business. Okay, next one. Ten, having a bad smell. Well, before I said poo is nemse napayo, right? We say stinky. You can also say stinky. Oh, your feet are stinky. Oh, them say nah, right? You say your feet are stinky, or somebody's breath, oh, it's stinky, or somebody's, you know, underarm, stinky. <laughs> okay, stinky. Next one. 11. To take away, not shoes, but to take away means to, to drain. So imagine this poor guy here, his energy is drained. It's like a battery, right? Your cell phone battery. Uh, the battery is gone. You take away the battery power by using your cell phone. You drain the battery. Some people's, people, it's like they have a battery, their body, they lose all their energy. They feel drained. I feel drained. That's uh, some, some people can say that. That means I have no energy. It's all gone. Next one, acting in a smart and sensible way. So if someone acts in a smart and sensible, what is this girl doing? She's, she's pushing away the hamburger and the Coke. And instead of eating the hamburger, she's eating an apple. This is sensible. So she is wise. Wise is like smart. But wise also means you have a lot of experience. You're acting on experience. Smart, smart kind of means you're intelligent. You, maybe you know about how to solve math problems or you know how to do that. But wise is more like life experience. If you know how to act in a sensible or practical way because of your life experience, you are wise. And that's usually why older people are wise because they have more experience in life. So there's a little difference between wise and smart, right? Uh, wise is usually because of past experiences. You act in a sensible way. Okay, next one. A big open space filled with plants. So, of course, this is famous. Is this Goryeong? Is it right? Uh, you have the tea, um, the, the, uh, the plants that they make tea from, green tea. Korea is famous for tea. And there's a, a place in, in Korea that is very famous for growing tea. It looks like this is a picture from that area or an area similar to that. But it doesn't matter if it's tea, it could be corn, it could be wheat. It's a big open space filled with plants. We call it a field. Okay? Farmers need, uh, usually, it's usually flat. Of course, if it's on a hill or a mountain, it's not a field really. It should be flat. And farmers need wide open fields to grow their crops. Field. Okay. 14. Absolutely necessary. So, what is it? It's a seat belt, absolutely necessary. It's crucial. Now, a seat belt, some people may argue, well, seat belt's not absolutely necessary, right? Well, a lot of times I don't get in an accident. But nowadays, because of safety and because of the traffic laws, we think seat belts are absolutely necessary. They're crucial. They're very important because if you do get in an accident, they're absolutely necessary to make sure that you are not injured or killed. So they are crucial. Crucial, something that's needed very much. Next one. Okay, I was talking about poop before, right? Clean up after your dog means scoop up the poop, right? Uh, now, this definition though, unused food that the body gets rid of, right? Unused food, when you eat something, your body uses most of the food, but some of the food it doesn't use, and that food passes through your body. What do we call it? We call it waste, okay? Now, before you may have 
uh, encountered waste too. Sometimes people refer to uh, garbage as waste, and that's possible, right? Especially for like a big factories or big businesses have a lot of waste. It's like extra um, stuff that they don't need. We call that waste. But it, we also call the organic, the food, the edible uh, material that passes through our body and we get rid of when we go to the bathroom, we call that waste. Okay. Okay. Next word, last word is facts and ideas that are known. Facts and ideas that we know. Those are knowledge. So think about that. Human beings are getting more and more facts and more and more ideas every year, every 10 years, every 100 years. The amount of knowledge of, that human beings have gathered together, especially over the past several hundred years, has grown by a lot. So we talk about that knowledge as, uh, we talk about those ideas and those facts as knowledge. So facts and ideas that we know about, that's knowledge. There's many things we don't know about, but human beings are very curious. We keep learning about our environment. And so our, uh, our area or our degree of knowledge keeps growing. Okay, well those are the words. Let's do the exercises, see how well we remember those words. Okay, number one, we need to beep the field before we spread the seeds. So before you spread the seeds and put them in the ground, what do you need to do? You need to prepare the field. Is that pull, cultivate, sow, or cover? Remember, sow is spread the seeds. So we need to do something before we sow the field. We need to cultivate the field. Remember, cultivate means to prepare, to prepare something. We need to prepare the field before we spread the seeds. We need to cultivate the field before we spread the seeds. Okay, number three. We've cultivated, there's that word again, we've cultivated that field with plenty of manure. It is very beep. Okay, so again, part of cultivating, part of preparing the land is, you know, like turning, uh, you know, making a, a rose in it or, or breaking up the top surface so the seeds can get in the land easily. But another part of cultivating is putting manure on the ground, right? So when you put manure on the ground, remember manure has a lot of nutrients in it that's good for the plants. And when we say a plant, an area is good or has a lot of nutrients, it's good for growing, we say that land is fertile, fertile. We've cultivated that field with plenty of manure. It is very fertile or fertile. Some people pronounce it different ways, fertile. So not useless, not marked, not understood, but fertile. Okay, next one. Five, you should beep that bottle. You can fill it back up with water. Fill it back up. So you have a bottle, right? A plastic bottle of water, okay? Uh, I'm not going to throw it away. I'm going to use it again. I'm going to fill it back up with water because why should I throw it away, right? Still good, right? Um, so what should I do? I should use it again. What word means to use again? A, recycle, B, harvest, C, believe, or D, crack? Of course, you know A means to use again. You should recycle that bottle. You should use it again because you can fill it up with water again. Don't throw it away. Use it again. Seven, that plant is not healthy. Not healthy. It needs more what? What do plants need to grow well? What did I talk about before? What do plants need to keep their bodies strong and healthy? Not just plants, but also animals. Nutrients, crops, fields, or knowledge. Okay, now we're talking about healthy, right? Not smart, besides plants can't think, they don't have brains. So right away we know knowledge is not the answer. Crops, no, because that's a type of uh, food that farmers grow. Fields, it needs more fields, that doesn't make sense. It needs, of course, more nutrients. Nutrients are what living things need to stay healthy. So that's the answer. Okay, well that wraps it up for the vocabulary section. Let's take a short break and we'll come back and look at the reading together. Okay, welcome back. We're about to turn to the reading section of lesson 14 here. And uh, remember, we're talking about what a farmer knows. So let's read about what a farmer knows and how they go about their job. Let's begin. It may not seem so, but being a farmer is a lot like a lot like 
being a scientist. It takes a lot of hard work and knowledge. A farmer studies and learns from the land. So this is an interesting introduction here. What they're doing is they're comparing a farmer to a scientist. And it seems strange, doesn't it, to compare a farmer to a scientist. We think of, about a farmer works outside, you know, gets dirty, uh, works hard. A scientist is usually clean in a white coat, working in a, inside in a laboratory. So it doesn't seem like they're the same. It may not seem so, may not seem so. It doesn't seem like it, but, right, but it's actually true. Being a farmer is a lot like, I underlined it because it's very similar. A lot like means very similar, almost, it's like bistandeo, right? Not toqueteanio, but bistandeo, <laughs> chincha bistandeo, okay? It's very similar to being a scientist. Being a farmer, being a scientist, they're actually very similar. It takes, what is it, it? It takes, we use it takes together as an expression, it takes, when we're talking about what's needed, right? For example, how far is your school? It's 10 minutes away. It takes 10 minutes to get to school. I would say it takes me 10 minutes to get to school. Here, it takes a farmer a lot of hard work and knowledge, right? So when we say it takes, that means it requires. Somebody is required to have something or to do something. In the case of a farmer and a scientist, both, it takes a lot of hard work and knowledge to be a farmer. It takes a lot of hard work and knowledge to be a scientist. That's why being a farmer and a scientist are similar, because both jobs take a lot of hard work and knowledge. A farmer studies and learns from the land. Like a scientist will study and learn about the subject, right? A farmer will study and learn about the land. And in fact, there are many scientists who study the land like a farmer, and many scientists will help farmers. Okay, let's move on. He or she, right? He or she, because a farmer can be a man or a woman. He or she must plant the right crops at the right time in the right place. A good farmer understands the different cycles of nature. This knowledge can be the difference between a good harvest and a poor one. Okay? This is a good sentence in the, in the beginning, right? We saw right, 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 right? Well, it's important for farmers to do their job well and to do their job correctly. They have to get many things right. They must plant the right crops. They have to plant the right type of food. Is it gonna be rice? Is it gonna be corn? Is it gonna be wheat? What type of crop are they gonna plant? The right crop at the right time. Am I gonna plant it in March, in April, in May? What time? is the best time? What time is the right time? And in the right place. Should I plant it in this field here or that field over there? So the farmer has to think about many different things and get all of these things right. The right type of plant, the right date, and the right location. The right uh, crop, the right time, and the right place. Okay, a good farmer understands knows the different cycles of nature. And of course, we could be talking about spring, summer, fall, winter. Of course, they know those different cycles of nature. This knowledge, the knowledge about nature, but it's not just seasons, we'll see that later on. But the knowledge of nature can be the difference between a good harvest and a poor one. So, if the farmer is smart and has a lot of knowledge about the cycles of nature, then that farmer can, can increase the chances of having a good harvest, of, of getting a lot of food from their work instead of getting a poor harvest, not a lot of food. So it takes a lot of knowledge to know how to get the most food at the right time. Okay, let's continue. Every farmer must know about the cycle of the seasons. We talked about that. 
Most crops are sown in the spring. Seeds that are planted in the winter when the weather is cold will not grow. So I talked about that. I mentioned that. Of course, farmers know about, you know, you plant in the spring and you harvest in the fall. That's the usual、uh, way. However, farmers have to know, according to the weather, exactly what time to plant, right? We think, oh, just plant in the spring. But when in the spring? Should we plant in March? Should we plant in April? Should we plant in May? If it's raining a lot this year, should we plant before the rains or after the rains? You know, if there's a frost on the ground, should we plant then or should we wait until the frost is gone? Okay, farmers need to know all of that. They have, more, they have deeper knowledge than we do. It's not just spring. So they have to know about the cycle of the seasons. Most crops are sown in the spring. Yeah, we know that. But seeds that are planted in the winter, when the weather is cold and the ground is hard, those seeds won't grow. So, farmers need to know about that. Seeds that are sown too late will not mature. The best day for planting is different for each crop. That's also what farmers need to know, right? They need to know、uh, that they can't plant after a certain date because they don't have enough time for those plants to fully grow, to become mature. If they plant too late, Right? The plants will die because of the cold, the fall, and starting of winter before those crops are fully grown. Also,、uh, the best day for planting is different for each crop, right? So sometimes, you know,、uh, a day might be better for corn, right? It might be better to plant corn earlier than it is to plant wheat. I'm not sure, I'm just using an example. But farmers know that. They know when to plant each crop. Right? Okay, corn first, then wheat, then, I don't know,、uh, something else. Right? So、uh, they know which crop to grow when, or to plant when. Okay, let's take a look at a video, and this is very interesting. Of course, this is during harvest time, usually in the fall. We can just get an idea of modern farming here. We see that modern farming usually uses a lot of machines. In fact, we have two machines working at the same time and two. Human beings operating the machines and they're working very closely together. They have to work very closely together because as they drive along, right, this machine is gathering the crop and processing it and it's going up here. The seeds or the, you know, the whatever it is, the wheat or the, the food, the crop is going up here and going into the truck. Here. And that's very convenient. That's a lot easier than going through here and picking by hand. It's not economical to pick by hand, then the price of the food would be too high. If you can use a machine, of course they can do it a lot faster and、uh, more efficiently, and they can get more and more food that way. So, the bigger farms,、uh, really,、um, farming in America, really the only way that they can make money is to do it on the big scale. The small farmer, they don't have a chance to make any money because it's too much work. And they have, to, they have to get a lot of food in order to make sure that they can uh, stay, uh, uh, that they, they can make enough money to survive. Okay, let's move on. A farmer must also understand how the land changes over time. Different plants require different nutrients. Plants get their nutrients from the soil. This can be bad for the soil. So, this is also interesting, and this is also what a farmer must know. They have to understand how the land changes over time. And that's a cycle, too, because you know, nothing really stays the same. In nature, things are always changing. We may not realize it because we just look at it once or we live short lives, but really, change is the natural state, right? We may think that no, change is not natural, but it is. Things don't stay the same for very long. The land changes over time. Farmers must understand how the land changes. Normally, we just look at the land and say, oh, it's like this. It was like this last year. It was like this five years ago. There's no change. But it does change, and farmers have to know how that changes. Different plants require different nutrients, right? So, corn will require different nutrients than rice, and wheat. Uh, will require different nutrients than, for example, if you're growing apples on your field. So you have to have different <coughs> nutrients for different types of crops. Plants get their nutrients from the soil. This can be bad for the soil. 
So if, think about it, plants are taking their nutrients out of the soil, well, okay, of course, those nutrients are gone from the soil, so that can be bad for the soil. A field that is used for many years to grow only corn will be drained of all the good nutrients for growing corn. A wise farmer grows different crops in different fields each year. This cycle ensures that the field always has the right nutrients for the right crop. Okay, and this is actually an idea that is kind of new, you think about it. It's not that old. It's only, I'm not sure how old it is, but it was only maybe uh, within the last few hundred years that farmers realized that you can't grow the same crop on the same field all the time. Because why? The example is corn. If you grow only corn on this field, only corn every year, only corn, well, after time, those uh, crops of corn will take all the nutrients out of the soil. They'll drain all the good nutrients for corn out of the soil. So, you know, maybe the first few years you have good crops of corn, but after that, the corn crops will get smaller and smaller and worse and worse. It won't be as good. Right? So a wise farmer, a farmer who knows about the land, they say, well, I'll grow different crops in different fields each year. That means f you have field A, you have field B, and you have field C. So one year I'm going to plant corn in field A, rice in field B, and wheat in field C. Then the next year I'll change, right? I'll put wheat in field A, I'll put corn in field B and rice in corn C. And I keep changing it, right? This cycle, that's a cycle, right? Because I start here with corn and I move it around and come back. That's a cycle. This cycle ensures, ensures, makes sure that the field always has the right nutrients for the right crop. Right? So if I plant corn here, it will use the nutrients for corn. Then I don't use corn there, I plant uh, wheat. And so wheat will take different nutrients. And that gives time for the land to uh, get the, the nutrients for corn again. And that's a smart way, a wise way of farming and to understand this cycle. Recycling is crucial to healthy farming. Not all of a plant is always eaten or used. The leftover parts are used to cultivate the soil. So think about that. I keep using corn as an example, but you think about a corn plant. A corn has a long stem, right? And then the buds are the, are the ears of the corn, and you only use those ears of the corn. The rest of the plant, what do you do with it? Do you gather it all and throw it away somewhere else? No. Farmers use, right, not all of the plant is eaten or used. They use the leftover parts, right, the stem and the leaves, right? They use those parts to cultivate the soil. So what they do is they leave it on the ground. And what happens is that as they die, they turn into, they, they get absorbed into the soil and the nutrients go back to the soil. So it's not just, of course, they use leftover parts of the plant. That's one thing that they use to cultivate the soil. This practice helps keep the soil healthy and fertile. Farmers also, also recycle animal waste. Stinky manure is some of the best plant food there is. So like I said, they don't just use the leftover parts of the plants, right? Although this practice helps keep the soil healthy and fertile, they also recycle animal waste, <laughs> All right? Because stinky manure is animal waste. If you go to the country in the spring, you go on vacation with your family, say you're driving from Seoul to Busan or you're going to the East Coast, Sometimes when you drive through the countryside, you smell some bad smell coming from outside the car, right? What is that? That's manure. And that's what the farmers are putting on the ground to grow the crops. So think about that next time you eat your vegetables. No, I'm just kidding, okay? But it's, it's important. That's part of life, right? Uh, that's what they need to do. So in the spring, we can smell the very strong smells in the countryside. But it's part of, you know, that's what they have to do. 
Those, those things are good nutrients for the plants. The plants use it as food, okay? So stinky mature is some of the best plant food there is. It's the best plant food. So it's very interesting. And it's part of the cycle of life. We eat it, our waste goes out, and then we use that waste to grow more food to eat again. It's a cycle of life. It sounds, ugh, maybe it sounds a little yucky or, you know, ugh, stinky, yucky. Um, but that's life, okay? Uh, that's interesting. Okay, of course we have to be clean, right? Uh, we have to be careful about what we eat and we have to eat clean things. Uh, but it's all, it's all part of a cycle of life. Okay, let's go on. Don't worry. That's what I'm saying here. Don't worry. Farmers wash your food before they sell it. That carrot is safe to eat. Just remember though, after it goes through you, it just might become fertilizer too. So that's what I was just talking about, right? We think about it, it sounds yucky, well, it sounds disgusting, but you know, that's the way it is. But don't worry, right? Be happy. Um, don't worry, farmers wash your food, right? Farmers will wash your food. Uh, of course, uh, supermarkets will wash the food sometimes. Your mother, or if you get older and you prepare food yourself, wash your food just in case because you don't know if somebody was careful or not careful. But your mom always washes the food before she cooks it, right? People are safe in the kitchen. So wash your food before, uh, farmers wash the food before they sell it. Uh, people who cook wash the food before they cook it. That carrot is safe to eat. Don't worry, there's not manure on the carrot, right? You, they wash it, especially some, sometimes you go in the supermarket, you can see the clean carrots and you can see the carrots in dirt, right? If you get the clean carrots, right, then no problem, but they're more expensive. You could buy the carrots that are still dirty, but take them home and wash them well, and then you can eat them, no problem. Just remember, after it goes through you, after you ate that carrot and it goes through you, it might become fertilizer again. Okay, so it's a cycle. Okay, let's talk about this story. What is this story about? This story is about what? A, the cycles of farming. B, how to learn about farming. C, the dangers of farming. And D, where food comes from. Well, of course, you know it's A. This story is about the cycles, because that's what we're talking about, the cycles of farming. Not just when to plant crops, you know, in the spring and then they're, they're good in the winter, but also, you know, to, to cycle the areas, the land, right? One time you use it for corn, then you use it for wheat, then you use it for rice, and then you come back to using it for corn again. That's a cycle. Think about the cycle of the food. As we eat the food, it passes through our body and it becomes manure, and then that is put on the field and plants will eat that as food, and then it will become food again that we eat. So that's also a cycle. There are many cycles of farming. So A is the right answer there. We didn't learn about how to learn about farming, no. The dangers, we didn't talk about dangers. And where food comes from, didn't really talk about that. This was about the cycles of farming. Okay, question number two. A farmer must know the cycle of the seasons so that, remember, so that is like why. What's the reason for that? So that he or she can plant crops in the winter, B, crops can be harvested in the spring. C, seeds will not mature. Or D, he or she can plant crops at the right time. So obviously we can see some wrong answers here. We do not plant crops in the winter. Well, that's crazy, we don't do that. Crops can be harvested in the spring. No, crops are harvested in the fall, not the spring. Seeds will not mature. No, we want seeds will mature, right? <laughs> so that's not right. Our last answer choice is D, and that's the right one, so that he or she can plant crops at the right time. Farmers n must know about the cycle of seasons, right? They know that they have to plant crops in the spring and the growing season during the summer, and then in the fall, at the end of fall, they will harvest those. So that's the cycle, right? The cycle of the seasons. They have to know about that so that they can plant crops at the right time. Okay, next one, number three. If only one crop is grown in a field every year, that field will be fertile. B, that crop will be corn. C, the soil can grow wise. D, the nutrients will be drained from it. So let's look at this for a minute here though. 
If only one crop is grown in a field every year, that means the same crop is grown every year in the same field. For example, you have your field and you only grow corn in that field, only corn every year. Remember what we talked about? What will happen to the soil? What will happen? That field will be fertile? No, it will become infertile, right? The, all the nutrients will be drained from that field. B, that crop will be corn? No, that doesn't make sense. It could be corn, it could be wheat, it could be rice, it could be apples, whatever. C, the soil can grow wise. What? <laughs> soil can think? Soil can learn? No, dirt can't learn. It doesn't have a brain. That doesn't make sense. D, the nutrients will be drained from it. That's what I said before, right? If you only grow one crop in that field every year, the nutrients will be drained from that field. It means that field. Okay, so that's number three. How about number four? Farmers use manure. Why do farmers use manure? It's stinky, it smells. Nemse napayo, right? It's stinky. What do they use it for? They use it to A, fertilize soil, B, sow seeds, C, sow the harvest, and D, understand the seasons. <laughs> farmers use manure to understand, they study the manure to understand the seasons. I hope not. That would be very terrible, right? Obviously, that's not right. Sow the harvest. You don't sow the harvest. You remember the word I taught you? You reap the harvest. You don't sow the harvest. Sow seeds. They use manure to sow seeds? No, they use their hands or nowadays machines to put seeds in the ground. They use manure to fertilize the soil. Fertilize, to put nutrients into the soil. And that's what they use manure for. And of course, it's stinky. It sounds disgusting, but that's the way life is. That's what's used. And that's how farmers, wise farmers, have discovered this. And they know that that's how they can grow good crops. Okay, well that about wraps it up for this lesson. It's kind of interesting to think about this. You know, there's a lot of different cycles in, in the earth, right? And this is an interesting cycle, right? We know about the seasons and planting, but we also learned about, you know, the importance of growing crops in different fields in different years to give the land some time to recover. And we also learned about the cycle of the food. As it goes through our body, it becomes waste. That waste is used to grow new food that we eat again. So there's a lot of different cycles that we learned about in this lesson. As usual, I hope that you've learned a lot and that you found this interesting, because it is. It's very interesting to learn about the world around us, isn't it? Okay, we'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody.